Welcome to Closet Cosplay, the podcast where we help you create con-worthy cosplays on a closet budget. I'm LJ. Oh, and I'm Michelle, and our uh, intro actually worked for once. We didn't stumble over ourselves. Typically, we always stumble over ourselves she's, in our intro. She's saying we, but she means me. <laughs> I think I've stumbled a couple times. I just told LJ I didn't remember our intro, so. That's true, and I did remember it, and the only reason I remember it is because it was the same thing as when, like, when a teacher would come into your class and be like, hello, Mrs. Da-da-da. If I add a cadence to it, it helps me remember. So now you know our... Uh, behind the scenes secrets that we don't actually know are interested apparently. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to talk about some different genres of punk, I guess is is kind of what we're going through. So, we're going to focus in on steampunk, which I'm pretty familiar with and love steampunk aesthetic. Mm-hmm. And LJ just too. Her yes. her tags on Instagram are all clockwork. And they're, of course, spelled differently because, you know, but yeah. And then we're also going to be talking about cyberpunk, which is a different animal. They're all in the same genre. And this is kind of what we're going to be getting at is when you hear the term cyberpunk and you hear the term steampunk, they sound and even when you look at some of them, they're a little bit similar, but we have had a request for a cyberpunk character and Michelle has done a steampunk character before. So we're going to kind of get into what makes one of those cyberpunk and what makes one of those steampunk, what reads, what doesn't, what makes sense for the genre and what doesn't. And some things cross over like... I feel like in steampunk and cyberpunk, you see goggles. I yeah, think that's you see a big goggles part of it. A lot. <laughs> and it's different what the goggles do. So with like the goggles on steampunk, you would see it of like, they have like little glasses and gears and they're, you know, browns and leathers and things like they that. They can be like a weathered brassy type look. Yeah, and- because steampunk is based around kind of the idea of like an alternate universe Victorian-ish era. I think of like steam trains kind of too. Yeah, like it's almost like and- the beginning of the industrial revolution if there was also magic. <laughs> Which, wouldn't you just love to live in that world? Oh my gosh. I would love to live in that world. Transport me back there and let me live there. Yeah, as long as I get the same rights as I do now. (laughs) Gotta add that in. Yeah, that's always like, you know, the the joke is that the time travel is like a a white man's fantasy because no matter where you go in time travel. He'll be all right. He'll he'll be all right. (laughs) Me, maybe not so much. But anyway, I digress. Uh, But cyberpunk, when you see their goggles, they're more plastics they're not metals they're you know they have a lot of leds because it's more technology based and so they're similar but it's different about what powers them i guess so would you say this is a fair statement that when you think of steampunk you think kind of in the past and when you think cyberpunk you think more in the future definitely i would i would definitely say that that's past versus future in that sense and they both have an element of technology but it's what powers that technology. With steampunk, it's magic or it's steam or, right. or it's gears. And with cyberpunk, it's electricity. And they do have magics too in cyberpunk kind of stuff, but it it's definitely leans more on a technical side. Like computers and yeah. electricity. Yeah, like AIs take on more of like a sort of ethereal sort of ephemeral take instead of it just being like straight computers like what we think of like i always think of that 90s movie where they were like hacking i don't even remember what it was called it's probably just called hacker or something like that and it's just like he's like he's hacking and it's showing like going through the internet as like a physical space and like i always kind of think of that as like a precursor to to cyberpunk that reminds me of wreck it ralph when he wrecks the internet have you seen that movie i have not um, they go into the internet, and it's just so fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can see that. Let's go into the internet and uh, just explore the good parts of the internet, not the bad parts <laughs> of the internet. Like It's a very small pool of the internet at that point. Yeah, that's true. That's kind of what they did. They were in, like, games, and they went up to, like, the Wikipedia. Yeah. Like, the Google. And he was auto-correcting them, so they'd say, where? And he'd fill in all the blanks for them. Oh. And it was so cute That's cute. Fun. Um... 
One of the other things I was just sitting here thinking is like, okay, so you've got your goggles. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say one of the other major differences between uh, steampunk and cyberpunk is color theme. Okay. So you see a lot of browns and golds, brass, things like that with steampunk because it is that antique sort of. I feel like antique metal. Yeah. And like weathered browns. Mm -hmm. And like Victorian stripes kind of yeah. come to mind when I think steampunk. Because you're trying to put this in the past, too, and, and people do think of, like, the sapia sort of tones. Nobody really thinks, which is funny, because if you go and you look at a lot of Victorian dresses, they were some wild colors. There was purples and pinks and, like, all kinds of just garish, terrible color combinations. <laughs> but, again, this is like an alternate universe steampunk sort of thing, and when we think of it, we think of brass and gears and metal and industrial revolution and stuff like that, and so that's where you see it. But then in cyberpunk, you see black, and then you see neon colors. Yeah, it's it reminds me of like a glow party rave kind of color. Yeah. With like the lights and the neons and fluorescence against the blacks. Yeah, and the black is always seems to be, that's your base color. I, right. I don't really see a ton of cyberpunk costumes or characters that are very much like primary color with black accents. It's usually black with fluorescent, very fluorescent neon. neon colors. And that's a really cool contrast, especially when you get into the cosplay stuff with like the goggles, especially like there's, and we added some of these to Amazon that um, you can see in the links where it's these LED goggles with like the circuit board sort of like look. And, and they light up. They light up and it's really, really cool. And that's one of the things you don't really see with steampunk a ton unless they're doing like the magic aspect of it. And then, mm. then it's like a blue typically. Right. I feel like um, with cyberpunk especially, it's more lit up and electronic. So you'll see the light up goggles. You'll see mm-hmm. like lights on different accessories. Because everything's supposed to be kind of techy. So right. everything is run instead of by gears, run by tech. So Right. <laughs> and they'll, you'll always see the joke about there's I think there's even a song out there called like Unnecessary Gears and it's about it's like a kind of tongue in cheek critique on the steampunk aesthetic because you do just see on steampunk I could stick a gear just here. gears everywhere and they serve stick absolutely no purpose. But I won't say th- I would say that you kind of see that with cyberpunk in the same sort of way of like there's, there's tech stuck everywhere yeah, where there's it doesn't tech need to be. stuck everywhere when it doesn't need to be. There's lights in places where it doesn't need to be. So in both genres, you kind of get this, this a little bit, like you're going a little extra with it. And it doesn't necessarily have to serve a purpose. It can just look cool. Oh, yeah. I'm all for stuff looking cool. Yeah. And so like Chad, like he's on his um, request for his cyberpunk kind of character, his main thing was like attention grabbing. Oh, yeah. And was, cyberpunk is attention grabbing by itself. That's I what think. it's made to be. Yeah. So it's like, oh, great. So I'm like, I'm out here. And, he, and the, uh, just a little bit about Chad's character is he it's supposed to be like a hacker slash decker, which I did a little bit of research on that. And um, the deckers are sort of like they can get into it's kind of what I was talking about where they can get into that 3D space, I guess, of the of the Internet or the Matrix. And um, the hackers are obviously what we know as hackers. And it seemed like uh he wanted to do like a cool calculating sort of geniusy thing. And when you look at cyberpunk, a lot of it is like you had mentioned, it was very tactical looking, uh, very roguish looking almost. Uh, I think wear. of like bomber jackets with like cargo pockets mm-hmm. and just that tactical type look where it's just got a lot of pockets or a lot of movement. Yeah. And because it's almost always feels like it's set in some sort of like, future, and I I hesitate to say dystopia, but it's almost that way where it's like, you kind of have to be prepared. Like you've got a job. Everybody's got a job or something that they've got to do. And so you've got prepared for the worst situation. Yeah. You're strapped and you're blinking lights at the same time. That's what's going on with cyberpunk. Kind of. But uh, for him, he was like, I want a cool calculating genius. So for me, I was like, okay, I don't think that necessarily reads as very rogue-ish. He's not going to have, like, the trailing pieces of cloth or the loose buckles. Like, I think more 
professional looking. Right. You wouldn't even really use the tactical version of that where it looks more military for someone that's cool and calculating. I think more streamlined. Yeah, I think more streamlined. I almost think like, okay, so there's this one, the shirt that I did add on Amazon that you can see. And it's it's a straight black shirt, but it's got these great neon, like orange, and you can pick any color or a couple different colors, lines. And it's like a, like a high collar. And it still reads to me as like cyberpunky because it's got that neon accent with a black, but it is more professional. Like it is not somebody that you're going to see jumping, you know, parkour or anything like that, like out on a city street, but it is somebody that you're going to see. And I thought what would be a cool idea for him because he's a hacker. And when I think hacker, it's somebody who's always concerned more about other people's business. Yeah, I, I could just picture this guy walking into like some mega million dollar company and being like, I'm here to take care of your problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost and like an anti hacker. Hacks kind of thing. into yeah. the computer systems and does his job. Yeah. So, like, for me, I think a cool thematic thing for that would be if, like, you see, he had some sort of, like, mirror aspect to him. Like, if he had mirror glasses. Oh, like this, yeah. yeah, like mirror glasses. And I actually saw this one, and it's not feasible to really wear around a lot, but it would make a very cool picture. Is it's just this chrome full mask with no features or anything but it's like hackers are always very much about you know protecting your identity too so i feel like you've always got to have that aspect of protecting their identity which is why you see all the masks and everything so i think like the glasses would be really good especially if they were completely mirrored because it's like it's about you and it's not about him and if you had like there's a nice watch that I put on there that's like, it's all in binary and it blinks. And so it's like, it's the binary, instead of it just being straight numbers, kind of gives more of a hint of him being a hacker, somebody who's computer oriented. Like there's all these things that I think read. Um, The only thing is I do want to give him more, something that's like even flashier that I've got to figure out because he wants it to be attention grabbing. And I I want him to be professional in a way that grabs people's attention, which is kind of a difficult thing to do. <laughs> right. It's a difficult task. Okay. I want to back up a little bit. Okay. So you mentioned mirrored glasses. Yes. Okay. So I was on Amazon looking at goggles for steampunk and LJ was more focusing on the cyberpunk aspect of things. Yeah. Well, what kept popping up um, were these goggles and they kind of had that diamond looking texture to them where they were oh, you know, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of cut in a specific way of the front where they didn't look flat Mm -hmm. they looked more textured Mm -hmm. and they were holographic looking and they had like spikes coming off the side and then you saw the mirrored glasses that were actually more mirror instead of holographic Mm. now which would you say reads more cyberpunk slash steampunk because one thing i also noticed on amazon while i was browsing was i had typed in steampunk But to me, some of the stuff I looked at, I was like, that looks more cyberpunk than steampunk. So we've said that Amazon sometimes will just toss in words, right, to get you to, you know, just see stuff, put it in front of people. Because I guess steampunk is probably more searched than cyberpunk, do you think? Most likely. And then they're obviously just hitting on anything that's like close. Yeah. Because it's just algorithmic kind of like well you're searching this maybe maybe this will work for you and they don't really have an understanding and that's kind of one of the reasons we're discussing these is well you're gonna if you're going to go look on amazon and if you look at steampunk you're going to get a lot of cyberpunk things so what is the difference (laughs) another question i have because i think when i think of those holographic glasses with the spikes i think like mad max is desert Apocalypse, what are you, post-apocalyptic. Yeah, the post-apocalyptic. Where's that fall on the spectrum of so genre? So there's, like, I would have to look it up, but there are a dozen different, like, there's, like, desert punk and, you know, this sort of punk and da 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 Now, I would say spikes definitely fall more on the cyberpunk if you're going to put them in one of the two categories. Right. I don't really see any sort of spikes in my experience. I take that back. I see studs. I see okay. studs in steampunk, and I see spikes in cyberpunk. Now, are you talking about rounded? Yeah, like those little that are round like rivets, like rivet yeah, yeah, looking? like little rivets. Okay. Again, it all kind of goes back to an industrial look. Like if right. it's made out of a machine, you could but, stick it in steampunk, right? But if it's made out of, <laughs> we say machine, 
a steam powered machine <laughs> as opposed to a electricity powered machine. Yeah, so I picture spikes would go more into the cyberpunk bag. I would. And I would I would definitely say this with a particular set of people that would be in cyberpunk. That's your you know, your parkours, your brawlers, your people that are kind of more the out more the tactical look. The more tactical so look. So less what cold and calculating Chad's character. Yeah. And more of like a Mad Max running around the city, jumping over stuff, tactical cyberpunk look. Yeah, I would... Which I feel like that's two different sides of cyberpunk. Yeah, it really is. And it's like an A-genre. Like, you're going to have the differences, the subcultures within the culture because that's what makes it more realistic. If everybody looks the same, then it's just, well, that's just the one genre archetype and then it becomes boring it's a matter of making it your own yeah and doing something a little different so maybe if you like spikes maybe going more that tactical route yeah or if you like more of the clean look going more of a professional route now they do make these like led strips that i don't know if they are on amazon but i know that they make them and I think it would be really cool that if you're going to do cyberpunk and let's say you like a base item that is steampunk or it's just it's it's too plain but you like the silhouette of it or whatever like say it's an arm gauntlet right sure you could take those adhesive led strips and put them on the arm gauntlet and so you would have that you know instead of unnecessary gears you'd have your unnecessary lights but those would definitely be attention grabbing I think that would work. Or gloves that have, they make gloves that have like stuff that kind of runs through them, LED stuff. I want, I want, I want them to look cool. I do want them to look cool. So we have, okay, let's get back to our character build. So we have a professional looking button down. Is Mm -hmm. that what it was? Well, it's like a zip, I think it was a zip up and it was like a high collar zip up, but it was like a, uh, had the neon orange is the one I saw down the front and it also depends on like I know it sounds strange but there are certain colors that people will want to associate with different things <laughs> bless you edit that out <laughs> bless you uh certain colors people will associate yeah with so things. like oranges you'll see orange and blue are really popular colors in cyberpunk aesthetic that I've seen I, if I was going to give him a color I would give him blue I've seen yellows, too. Yeah, yellows. Yellows are really popular. Those all read very, like, uh, very techy. Um, they're unnatural colors, and they're very contrasting to what you would see in steampunk, which is you're more of your earth tones. These right. are going to be more of your neons. So, we've got a shirt. We've got a watch. You said a mirrored gla- like mirrored glasses. Mirrored glasses, I would think, at the very least. Um, I think... I really like the idea of the mirrored glasses. I think those would be imposing. Right. Um, and still do the identity kind of hiding that they that you would want. Um, I imagine, I don't imagine a hat of any kind. Yeah, I was trying to think, would you do some kind of headpiece? I, I immediately go to Diva from Overwatch's, you know, kind of techie headset, headphone type deal. He could have a, because they do make stuff like that where it's like a headpiece sort of thing that could be, like, even if you wanted to do more techie, they make those goggles with, like, the, and and this is kind of the choices that we get, is when we get as much information as we get from a survey, like, we'll kind of play with the ideas and be like, here's our idea for this, and here's our idea for that. So, like, while I say mirrored goggles, he may like the idea of the bigger techier headpiece and right. that that's definitely an with option. the lights going through it yeah and we've the... added all of that to the amazon list as an option um now the pants i would almost just say again not going to go super tactical for this specific character which you'll see a lot of if you ever look at the subreddit streetwear i would argue that a lot of stuff on that subreddit would could be considered cyberpunk um, but they love the, like, loose harem pants that are tight at the knees down. Like, yeah. those read very cyberpunk to me. Yeah. Um, the long coats. But I don't see that character having Wearing that. that. Almost like a business suit, but not quite. That's what right. I see. Um, his shoes would be normal. See, I, I, for me, I think where you, you would get a lot of his character to read 
is in his accessories. Right. Like the things you add on top of the base layers. Right. And the that you want, again, it's almost like the, you've got the black base layer and then you've right. got the accent. So I almost feel like he should kind of embody that. Right. For his character. Right. Cool and calculating cyberpunk character. So that's, that's my thing with him. We'll see if he likes it. <laughs> we will. Maybe he can give us some ad- more ideas of the accessories he wants that we will add into the Amazon cart later. Yeah. So it, that you guys can go look at it all. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, let's shift gears and yep. go towards steampunk. Now, we've, shift we've, gears. Hey, hey. <laughs> I didn't even realize I did that. That's funny. I'm not a... I'm, is that a pun? It was a pun. I'm not a pun person. Sometimes people catch puns that I make on accident, but I didn't do that on purpose, I promise. That's a good one. Anyway. Anyway. Let's shift gears. <laughs> I'll do it purposefully this time. So we've, 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 we, 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 we'll edit that out. We have gone from a men's cyberpunk look, and now I want to cover a women's steampunk look as a contrast. So... My steampunk character was created for a LARP type scavenger hunt setting for a birthday party that someone was throwing. They were throwing. Th- yeah, it was a really interesting concept. They were throwing a birthday party where it was like we were on teams and you were trying to attack the other team, but you were also trying to find like objective areas and things. So it was really interesting. And nobody told me to show up in a costume, but me being super extra was yeah. like, oh, this is a perfect opportunity to do a steampunk trick. I'm doing it. So I had a lot of this stuff and just hadn't put it together. Mm-hmm. But the goggles I have, I got off Amazon for probably $7 and they have that weathered brassy look to the side and kind of little triangle type detailing on the side Mm -hmm. of them to just make them look have more dimension Mm -hmm. and so I had those I curled my hair I put dirt on my face and made Mm -hmm. myself look dirty like I had been working in because it's the industrial revolution yeah there's smog in the air and right exactly (laughs) so I just made myself look kind of dirty which really added to the effect of it. And it was just like brown eyeshadow smudged it on different areas of my well, face. Well, I think that's also part of the reason that you see goggles in steampunk is you have to think about like they're working. That right. They, they actually do serve a purpose 90% of the time. Whereas, so steampunk, it's like they serve a purpose. And in cyberpunk, they're more of like an identity hider. They have, they both have purposes, but to, for, for two very different things. Another way we can di- differentiate yes. between the two. And... I do want to mention with the goggles and wearing them and being practical, I didn't wear my goggles on my eyes. I wore them on top of my head for not very long because my head started to kill me. And they could be loosened or tightened, but they're hard. They, these were not soft. They didn't like mold to my head in a way that was comfortable. They were just hard and like pressing into my head to stay on. And so that was not comfortable. (laughs) So keep that in mind when you're looking at your goggles. If you want to keep them on your head, you may want to look for something with a softer side. You could add some padding to it. Yeah. Add some padding somehow, but mine didn't have that. So Eventually, they transitioned, and I just wore them around my neck like a necklace almost, yeah. which works. Yeah, like you see people wear it, and honestly, a lot of the art that you see for steampunk, they're on top of their head. They're almost almost never wearing them on their eyes unless they're like, I don't know, the artificer kind of kind of character. Right. Um, which, again, it's we all understand what it is without you having to explain necessarily. Like, exactly. Get it that those are in use at some point with your character. And the picture I took, I believe the goggles are on top of my head. They so are. You can totally take your picture with the goggles on top of your head and then <laughs> stick them around your neck for the rest yeah. of the day while you're walking around at a con or, or whatever you're doing in your outfit. So that's just a practical way your goggles kind of will get used and i have a steampunk corset Mm -hmm. which i got off amazon which when you look at steampunk corsets i usually look for anything that's got like belts pouches um buckles any kind of just shiny type detailing again tactical but in a different sort of way different way you can carry a lot of things so 
the course that I have is brown and it has a belt that comes across with a pouch on it. It has different hooks kind of mm-hmm. all over it. Um, it has an interesting, and I love um, these different corset looks, but this is the one that has like the latch type closures. Yeah, which I think is really cool. That look really, really steampunk. Yeah, I think those read very steampunk because it's not, they didn't do that in Victorian times. Like, that wasn't a thing, but that's something that, like, we, I don't know, you can pick that out really well as being, like, this is that specific genre. Right. It's almost unnecessary, but it's a little bit extra. (laughs) Right. And I do have another corset that I didn't wear in this particular look, but it's an underbust corset, so Mm -hmm. it just comes across the belly area. And it actually has clocks all across it as the print, oh, which yeah. is super cool. And I love that corset. Anything with clocks, too, is just going to be steampunk instantly. Right. So I could totally switch that out for the corset I did wear. Mm-hmm. And then I wore like a plain kind of white tank top with lace detailing down the front of it underneath it Mm -hmm. just so that I had something under the corset. I don't think I own that shirt anymore, (laughs) but it's just a simple tank. I could have just as easily done it without it. Yeah. Or used a a billowy type white shirt that you kind of see in like Renaissance fairs. I imagine you could use that. You can, because again, even though it's like sort of Victorian based, like there's so much that is not actually Victorian about steampunk at all. And like, (laughs) especially the varied kinds of shirts and the fact that you wear corsets on the outsides of your clothes would be a big no, no in Victorian times. Yeah, but we do it anyway. (laughs) But we do it because Alternate universe Victorian magic. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Which is totally fine. And I have a high-low skirt Mm -hmm. in tan that I wore underneath it. It It's very simple. We were outside and it was hot that day. So I was trying not to overheat myself with some heavy skirt. Mm -hmm. However, there is something I have swooned. Is swoon the correct word? Swooned over? I mean, yeah, that's fancy. Obsessed over, yeah. On Amazon, that is a dress type thing where it's like cap sleeved it has like a pull in of the waist that you could stick a corset over very easily and it has a high low skirt Mm -hmm. and it comes in all kinds of different colors and i feel like that would be a perfect base layer for a steampunk look yeah definitely i just love it love it to death and it kind of has the ruffles like it looks like it's bustled yeah which i really like yeah, the ruffles and the bustles always will will read very steampunk. You will not see that in cyberpunk hardly. Now, you will see corsets in cyberpunk as well, but they're usually very different. They're usually made out of latexes, and they're made out of... Yeah, I saw, like, one that just came straight across, and it was just black latex. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's just black latex. They're very... For how intricate everything else is on steampunk with their corsets, I would say that with cyberpunk, they're a lot more simple. They're right. they're a base layer. Whereas corsets on a steampunk are almost very much your statement piece. It's got all your, your cool extras. latches and your, your, your showy stuff and your uh, buckles and pouches and belts. And yeah. 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 All the things. And it's, uh, and it helps read old and Victorian because that's primarily when they did yeah, it. And they look worn and And I would say that Victor or the steampunk stuff is also more about being I don't want to say cool looking because so is cyberpunk. Oh yeah. But I would say that if I had to say that which one would be more concerned about looking pretty, it would be uh, steampunk. Right. Because you see the ruffles, you see the skirts and you don't really see dresses a lot in cyberpunk again no. it's, it's very much like you expect people to be running around on top of buildings right you can't quite do that in a skirt exactly yeah i've seen some cyberpunk with like you know the latex dresses that are always split down the middle or something like they're that. tighter yeah they're tighter and steampunk's looser steampunk is a lot looser um and i think that's a good point when it comes to the female stuff um for the differences is I see that things are going to be tighter when it comes to the cyberpunk. Right. I think it's going to be looser, frillier, more aesthetic in that sense when it comes to, to the steampunk. Another note about steampunk stuff is at most cons and at Ren fairs, you'll see these steampunk vendors and something I've always loved that they always have are the top hats yes. with the goggles. I love the love that look. The goggles. Also, they'll do these really cool things that you can hang off your belt that they're like leather work, but they have a teacup. So they hold your teacup. Yeah. On the side. They're like oh. a tactical teacup holder with I the little things. love that. They're so cute. 
So Love that. So there's, there is, and I will only briefly mention this. So there is something called a chatelaine that I have been researching Ooh. in, in um, that they used in Victorian times. And basically what it was is it was almost a mix between like a utility belt and a charm bracelet. And women would wear it on their day dress and it would have usually like a sewing needle or a pencil or a little thing. But they're really cool looking. And that's kind of where you get that idea of these little tactical like, well, I've got a teacup and I've got this and that, like that, that. They're really based off Victorian chatelaines. And so like for me in my next florp, I'm actually going to be trying to find one that I can, I'm going to be recreating a chatelaine but with like the magical stint in mind. So I'm going to be doing instead of like sewing scissors, it's going to be like a poison bottle or something. Oh, or yeah. like, so I think that that's something I would love to see more in the steampunk genre is taking advantage of not just the pouches and things as where you keep your stuff, but like make a, make a chatelaine, make that teacup holder, make that, you know, uh, thing like that. I think those are really cool looking and I don't know. I just like stuff hanging off. Yeah, I love the stuff hanging off the belt. Yeah. They do a lot at Ren Fairs. Mm-hmm. And so I think you could bring some of that style aesthetic, that, yeah. that look into the steampunk. Yeah, and I, I don't see it enough. And like I have been, because I've literally been looking to have one or get one made. And there's like a couple of chatelains that are kind of steampunky that I've seen out there. But it's like literally one person on Etsy who's made two of them. Right. Like they're not that popular. And I, they're totally steampunk and they totally need to be used more. So if you're going to do steampunk cosplay, trust me, just look up chatelains. Make a chatel- chatelain. It'll be worth it, I promise. Sounds like a good plan. I know, right? So that's our episode that's the difference between cyberpunk and steampunk and kind of how you can differentiate between the two and and be very purposeful in the accessories you pick out for each one yeah and don't just go by the amazon words right just because you (laughs) type in steampunk doesn't necessarily mean that everything there is steampunk but it'll give you a direction yeah hopefully this has helped a little bit uh tell you which which genre you find something might fit in past versus future flouncy versus tactical i would say those are going to be your main differences neon versus brown neon versus brown these kinds of things (laughs) a few of my favorite things all right guys well that's it for us yep i believe so we'll see you next time on closet cosplay podcast bye bye (laughs) stop